Welcome to More Than A Few Words, marketing conversation for business owners. This is your host, Lorraine Ball. And you probably found this because my SEO was working. And I bet you're wondering how you can get your SEO to work for you. Well, to have that conversation, I've invited Bear Newman to join me. He's an accomplished digital marketer and author. He's got more than 15 years experience in the industry. And throughout his career, he's worked with businesses of all sizes. He strategized and implemented custom marketing strategies for hundreds of companies, helping them achieve their business goals. Bear, welcome to the show. Hi, Lorraine. Thank you for that wonderful intro. I'm excited to be here. I am excited to have you here and to have this conversation because I think a lot of business owners are frightened of SEO and you don't think they should be. I don't actually. I think it's a a big misunderstanding and uh, probably the biggest thing is setting them back. Okay. So let's see if we can't help them get over a little bit of that fear. I've got a new business. I have a new website. Where do I start? So the biggest thing with that is just to start. A lot of people have the mindset of, I want it to be perfect. It's going out there for the world to see. So it has to be perfect. There's a saying in Silicon Valley, done is better than perfect. And I (laughs) completely agree. It's just got to get done. You can go back and make it perfect, but just get it done, get it started. That's your biggest hurdle. You know, it's so funny because I started my marketing career at the end of the print era. And when you produced a brochure and you were spending five or ten thousand dollars on the printing it had to be perfect and taking that mindset and hitting the digital world that's a real shift because you can change it tomorrow if you decide that this doesn't sound right or this doesn't work right get it out there and get people interacting and that is a big mind shift from where marketing was really not all that long ago That's a wonderful point, actually. That's actually, believe it or not, it's a good thing if you're making updates to your site. If you go in and just leave it static, that's actually a bad thing. Google sees you're not continually adding value and they will actually dislike your content or not rank it as high because you're not continually improving it. Wow. Okay. So I need to make changes just to tell Google, hey, I'm still here. Yeah. Every time Google. So Google will actually scan your website in the background without you knowing it, depending on how rich your content is or how popular your, your content is every three, some five, seven days. And so every time they scan it, they check for changes. And as you're making changes, adding content that increases their perspective of how much value you're bringing to your customers. If you bring value, it makes them look good. So they'll want to show you more. Awesome. Okay. So number one, I get, I need to get my content out there. I need to be done, not perfect. I need Mm -hmm. to be updating it regularly. That's where things like blogs, I guess, come in pretty, pretty well, because that forces you to create and add some new content. But what other changes can I be making on my website to keep it fresh? Great question. So you can actually increase and make some changes to the content pages themselves. That's what Google is going to be looking at. Blog posts are great. What we're seeing right now with some of the competitors and AI content specifically is it's a lot of really bad content. And so people are creating a lot of it and it's not very good. If you can use AI to enhance the content that you create on your website, that's where you stand out and that's where Google will like you more. Okay. So take content that I already have, maybe have AI add a little to it or rewrite it a little bit, but keep it original. So it's still about me. Yeah, absolutely. You can add infographics, you can add images, anything that enhances it and adds more value to your visitor and really answers their questions. And so you can really, what you're trying to do is become the authority. So if you can create your content, make it a little bit better, maybe a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, whatever the case might be, to make yourself the authority and bring that most value to be able to answer the questions that people are looking for, that's what makes you stand out. Okay. So I'm committed to a schedule. I'm adding new content. I am keeping it fresh, but there's more to SEO than just writing my content. There is. That's really going to be the foundation is making sure you've got your content up. It's written. 
The next thing I would say, make sure you have in place when getting your website set up is tracking. Make sure you have tracking in place. Understand that as you make these changes to your content, does it help? Do you go up in actual uh, traffic when you make those changes? And that can kind of set the course for additional content you want to make. But make sure you have tracking in place. I have tracking. Obviously, Google, uh, it's not analytics anymore. It's their uh, G4. Isn't that right? Uh, they they keep changing names. And I, I, I will probably call it Google Analytics till I die because that's what it was for so long. Are there other tracking tools that can help you figure out whether your site is not only driving traffic, but driving the right traffic? There are a lot of tools. There are a lot of really expensive tools. If you're just getting started, by far and away, Google Analytics is your best bet. Use that. Uh, it's amazing. It's a very basic tool, maybe because it's so essential and kind of looked over. People don't realize the power that it actually has. It can decipher all of that information. You can see if Google Analytics or sorry, if Google Organic is driving the traffic or if Facebook is or if Instagram. So if you launch a campaign, Facebook might be sending you a ton of traffic and you'll understand, OK, this traffic is from Facebook. That's driving all of these sales for me. Let's not cut that off. Beyond traffic, are there other metrics that you should be looking at on your website to tell if it's healthy, if it's something that is going to be appealing to search engines? Yeah. So one of the metrics I look at is bounce rate. That's the easy one, jumps out. You can get very convoluted with some of the metrics, but to keep it simple, top level, bounce rate, if you've got a good bounce rate, that's essentially people came to your site, they liked it, they stayed. If you have a high bounce rate, simply stated, I came, I saw, I threw up, I left. <laughs> and I think there, there are is probably one or two exceptions. We did notice for a lot of our home service companies that the single biggest thing people were coming for was the phone number. So as soon as they got the phone number, they bounced away. And I think there are some exceptions, but I do, I do appreciate that in general, you want people to be staying a little longer, hanging out, finding out more about you. Yeah. And that's really where having a strategy in place, understanding what is you want to get. People will go through and they'll design a website, want to make it look pretty. What you want to do is say, what do I want them to do when they find me? Do I want them to call me? Do I want them to fill out a form and customize your design around what you want them to do? Basically, you're taking a, a five-year-old by the hand, walking them through the store saying, do this, do this, do this, and do this. That's exactly what I want every customer to do. Absolutely. And that's hard. Many business owners struggle with that because they're like, well, I want them to know about me. I want them to know about my product. I want them to call me. And when you push them and say, well, what do you want them to do first? Mm -hmm. And that is such a hard decision for a lot of business owners as they're starting out. Any tips on how to pick that top of the page action? Yeah. So I would definitely say what it is that you want, like your perfect customer, if they were to find you and they were to call you, is that exactly what that be like? That's by far and away the best possible result I could ask for. If you don't like talking to people, you're like, no, I do not want them to call me, fill out a form and I'll just respond to them via email. That's what I want. Perfect. Uh, make sure it's customized around that. And you have kind of an afterthought of if you really need to call me, you can, but just kind of customize it for that. So I would look at what why people found you, what it is they're looking for, what that problem is. Realistically, you're only going to have about three to five seconds from the time someone lands on your site to decide if you're worth talking to. So make sure that you address that the second they land, who you are, what you do, and why they should work for you should be your top priority. Awesome. Well, Bear, this has been amazing. And I'm going to encourage anyone who's listening, if you want to figure out who he is, and why you should work with him, you want to hop over to bearfoxmarketing.com. Bear, thanks for being a part of the show. Thank you, Lorraine. Loved it. It was a lot of fun. And if you are looking for other resources for your business, be sure to check out our toolbox. Look for MTFW wherever you listen to podcasts. This has been another episode of More Than A Few Words. Thanks for listening.